Welcome to today's webinar on building your IT professional brand. Uh, my name is Eric Bloom. I'm the executive director of the ITML Institute. Uh, I see some familiar names here, so you've probably heard me say this before. Uh, but basically, just a quick one moment on me. This is me. I'm a former CIO level of executive. I've written a bunch of books, uh, done speaking, coaching, things seen here. But uh, sort of enough on me. Let's move to the material at hand. We're gonna to begin today by talking about personal assessment. Basically, that's you being able to think about you. From there, what we're gonna do, we'll continue by a quick lesson on just professional branding, personal branding, what is it? From there, we'll move toward how you can formulate your strategy, actually build your brand based on that strategy. And then you know what? You really don't wanna be the best kept secret. So as a result of that, we'll finish by how do you market yourself internally? I don't mean by going around and saying, ooh, I'm great, but just uh, you know, ways that you can subtly let people know that your skills uh, are in place, that you're ready and positioned for promotion, et cetera. But let's begin with your personal assessment. Is there a 10 attribute that would be worthwhile for you to think about regarding yourself? Now, this list could be much larger also. These are 10 really good ones. You might say to yourself, gee, I wish this 11th one was there. Well, then add it to the list as you do your personal assessment. But the first of which is your general reputation. What I mean by that is when you walk into the room, do you add energy to the room or do you suck the life out of it? Like, for example, you're on a webinar with me right now for 45 minutes. The people who, who aren't here, the people that you work with on a daily basis, if they're talking about you, what do you think they're saying? Next one, your professional stature. That's a combination of your, uh, your college degrees, your certifications, your job title, uh, any great accomplishments that you've had internally within the company uh, or external big accomplishments. Like for example, if you were an Olympic athlete or something along that line, that just sort of adds to your, let me say, general gravitas. The next is your specific credentials. Again, that sort of ties to professional stature. I guess I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, and next is your professional strengths and weaknesses and personal strengths and weaknesses. You know, from uh, we all have them, you know, as do I, as do all. But it's really a good idea for you to sit back and really to have an honest discussion with yourself as to what you think that they are. Next is your industry activism. You know, I know people who've gotten jobs because of their industry activism, who've met new people, who've grown their professions, who've learned new things, who've selected specific products by asking other people that they work like themselves, that they were in professional associations with. As you can sort of hear by my tone of voice, I'm a big fan of that. But we'll be talking more about all of these later as we get in. But for now, the question to you is, are you active in your industry at all, professional associations, et cetera? The next, are you an advice giver? In other words, are you a thought leader? When people have questions, are you willing to help them? You know, a junior person comes and says, hey, how do we do this or whatnot? You know, you will, this is the first concept here of these that we're showing related to you sharing your knowledge, which as you'll see, will be a continued theme as we move past this. Are you service oriented? Certainly as IT people, we're in a service industry. The things that we do, the software that we develop is for use by other people within our company or external to our company. Uh, if we're on help desk or service desk, then it's actually the primary component of our job description. Next is, do you play well in sandbox? What I mean by that is, is that, you know, are you willing to sort of share your technical toys, so to speak? You know, are you willing to help others out just because you should? Uh, are you willing to, as they say, you know, are you a team player? In other words, is that what you're working on is important, certainly, but someone else needs your help. Are you willing to sacrifice or offer a little bit of your own time to help others? And lastly, just general professionalism. You know, are you more like a like a, a bull in a china shop? You get things done, but at the end of it, it's like there's mayhem. Um, or do you really carry with you sort of that idea that people think, gee, you know what? I would love to have this person in front of a customer. Gee, we need someone to make a presentation about our project to senior management. Would you be the right person to do that? 
Well, if the answer is yes, because of all the things here, but tying specifically to professionalism, if you're that person, if you're the person who can really uh, be seen as the sort of commensurate professional who can make these presentations, be seen as the front person for your project, or in some cases, your company, then what does that do? That adds to your reputation, to your contacts, et cetera. So you, uh, ask yourself all these questions about yourself. But then as you do, the question is, how do you know you're right? You know, it's one thing what we think about ourselves, but as we'll see as we, go, as we delve deeper into branding, that it's not always what you think of yourself, it's what others think of you. So guess where I'm headed with this? Is next is consider all of these characters as said for you personally. How do you say, you may look at that and say, well, Gee, you know, I can be a little bit like a bull in a china shop. I guess I shouldn't be. You know, I mean, we can do that as we ana analyze ourselves. But what we should really do is I would suggest to you that you find a trusted coworker. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's a friend of yours that you work with or others who are just important to you and you really trust, uh, you know, trust their opinion. And just say, hey, you know, blame me. Say, hey, I just took this great webinar from this guy named Bloom on enhancing your or building your, uh, your IT professional brand. And he asked me to talk, to suggest that I talk to a couple of people on this. What do you think? Will you help me out? And then the thing to ask them for each of those 10 categories or others that you may choose to add or detract from that list, uh, ask them these three things. You know, what should I continue doing? What are the things that I do that people like that really enhances my position? You know, my goal helps others within the workplace. What should I stop doing? What are those things that are really annoying other people that, well, I didn't really notice should be there that uh, should be removed? Oh, what should I start doing? What things aren't I doing that would be good for me to consider? For anyone who's in the, the agile world, yes, these are virtually the same exact questions you would ask in a sprint retrospective. But hey, they work there about how to improve the project. Why can't they work for you on how to improve yourself from a professional perspective? And also, if these people are willing to take the time and share with you their honest opinions and thoughts towards you, is you really should take them to heart, you know, and use that information to your advantage. So if that's your personal assessment, really, you know, uh, as you think of yourself and get opinions from others, for anyone who's taken a 360 review, it's a little bit like that, but it's an obviously a much less, uh, less formal type process. But now let's talk about professional branding. And no, I don't expect anyone to go diving over the desk. Probably not a good thing in a business scenario, but the picture is fun. Uh, but anyway, so let's talk about what is professional branding. I'd like to say here that first what it's not. Professional branding, it's not what you know, it's not what you think of yourself, and it's not your intentions. So if that's not branding, what is it? Your brand is what other people think you know, what other people think of you, and how the actions that you do are perceived by others. So again, this is a view of you from the outside in is what branding is. I'm going to give you an example of that. I'm based in Massachusetts. We have a highway that's called the, uh, the Massachusetts Turnpike. It actually is the road that goes from Boston and Massachusetts straight west to Seattle. Interestingly, it's that, it's that main road. Unfortunately, occasionally it does look like this. Um, but the reason I'm showing this picture is consider this scenario. You're driving down the center lane and someone cuts, and, and then uh, what you see is your exits right there. Someone is in your blind spot. So if you're driving here, they're in the right-hand lane about here. And you say, yikes, that's my exit. And you cut across and take that exit. And the person beeps at you. You accidentally cut them off. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. All right. What were your intentions? Your intentions were just to take the exit. And you made the slight error that this person, you know, because you didn't see this person there and, you know, accidentally cut them off. So you're feeling sorry and apologetic and you know a little silly that you didn't see them. What are they thinking about you? Are they thinking, oh, I bet this person just didn't see me here over it? Or, what are, they, or are they thinking, oh, this jerk, you know, I can't believe they cut me off like that, blah, 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 I'll learn how to drive, you know, and that everything you've done from the moment you were born to the moment you die are bad things. Um, what are they thinking about you? So, you know, what that's called is transference. It's taking this one event and then expanding it for all. 
Now, let's go the other side of this. You know, you're the one who is in the, the blind spot of that other person's car. Maybe the person was even in the left lane. And they go, they go, oh, my goodness, you know, I'm going to uh, visit my sick parents and have chicken soup in the car, and it will be cold if I miss my exit. And what do they do? They cut across three exits and take on the highway. Um, you know, they, and then they realize you're there, and oh, they feel sorry. They even wave a little bit. I'm sorry. What are you thinking? You're thinking, oh, what a jerk. All right, is that this is how it works. This is the difference between the intentions, neither of which for either you or that other driver was bad, and how you and that other driver perceive what happened, and then expand that to be everything about you. So this is why it's important for you to ask other people. And it's more important what they think you know versus what you know. There are other issues with that if you don't know what you're doing, certainly, but let's make the assumption that you do. Whoops. So in effect, what I'm saying is your brand is not you, the person. The brand is about you, the product. So think about it now. Let's say you're in a management position. You're reviewing resumes, okay? And you say, gee, how about this person? No, this person doesn't have quite the skills we need. How about this person? Ooh, this person looks good. Put that resume on the table. How about this person? No. How about this person? Yes. Okay, well, what, the, what, are you do, what are you doing? You're observing that person. You're deciding on that person based on their, I'm going to use the word, label. But I don't mean, but what I mean by label is, let me ask you this. Have you ever bought a bottle of wine based on the label? You know, I have. You know, I know a little bit about wine, but certainly not enough to, in all cases, decide it. We found a bottle of wine. My wife and I went on vacation. It was called, it was called Three Sisters was the name of the wine. We didn't know if it tasted like, you know, a, uh, uh, a fine Merlot uh, or somewhere south of gasoline. But you know what? My wife is one of three sisters. So guess what bottle we brought, you know, we picked up to, uh, to have? We bought that one. That is sort of your resume. Now, the thing is, is when we brought that bottle home, and obviously we would drink it, when we drink it, if it's really good, we'll buy another bottle of it. If it is more like gasoline, then well, maybe we won't. To be honest, in all, in all honesty, I can't remember how that wine is. I think we did buy it again, but, uh, but again, don't, don't hold me to it. But anyway, is that's the same with you. You're hired for a consulting gig or you're hired as an employee. Why are you hired? Because of the combination of your interview, your credentials, your label, your resume. But then once you're in there, no matter how good your resume looks, if they hate you, they'll never hire you again. Um, and even if you have a poor resume, if they love you, if they, don't, they don't care what the label of your bottle looks like, is it will be you the person. So effect, what I'm doing is, is this outside in look at you is an effect, yes. I hate to say it, I apologize, but I am comparing you to a bowl of cereal. You know, because why? Because that's a product. You know, when you buy Rice Krispies, I think this is Rice Krispies. It might be something a little oat oriented. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty darn sure those are blueberries on it. Uh, but anyway, is that this is how you're viewed. You know, you're viewed by your external persona, so to speak, until really people get to know you. And then it digs in a little bit deeper in their understanding of, do they work with you? Can you influence them? Do they trust you? They will think on your levels of confidence and in building your professional brand, if it's your managers, other stakeholders, or other senior people in your firm, is, is this person promotable when the opportunity comes up? So now let's change gears again, now that we've talked sort of, of what branding is in general. And now let's talk about formulating your strategy. The first thing that you need to consider, and some of these you may have already, just depending on where you are from CIO on down to your, uh, within your career, but you wanna define your career direction. And this is something that you could be changing, you know, as you go forward and grow professionally. But do you want to stay, stay technical or become a manager? Do you want to be a generalist? In other words, you want to be uh, a database administrator over any type of database, or you want to specialize on human resource systems. You know, so if you're looking at it from that perspective, uh, do you want, to, um, you want to be selecting the right technology? Should you be specifically technology oriented? Um, you, uh, do you want to be an employee or do you want to be an entrepreneur? You know, entrepreneur, take that from two perspectives. One could be to really start a company that you'd like to build, uh, or through things like Upwork and other things along that line, would you prefer to be an independent uh, 
a consultant, you know, that goes in and works a little bit in each one of these different companies and be the true, as they say, higher gun um, by being the true expert on a particular technology that you can go in and, uh, and do at a particular firm, you know, sort of my work is done here and then go on to the next one. Uh, and also, what technology do you want to choose? You know, yes, so you have, selecting the right technology is enormously important, but I went by that one too quick. Now, look at this bullet point here. How do you choose what technology you want to, you want to specifically select? Uh, why? Because, you know, it's funny, through our career, when we begin it, we say, gee, if I try really hard, I can be a this, whatever this is. You know, it could be a uh, could be a CIO. It could be a dentist. It could be a you know a, a technical fellow with a true specialty in say, for example, computer security. But then you know what? Once you're a this, it's hard to be anything else. So choose your technology. Choose your direction carefully. Certainly, you can adjust it, but just understand the more you personally invest in it, and the more it's personally invested in you, the harder it is to change. So now let's move toward credentials. You know, for where you would like to go, you know, um, do you need an MBA? Do you, you know, or a discipline-based master's degree, you know, depending on the technology you're moving toward. You know, like for example, I'll take cybersecurity just because it's such a hot mega trend of where we are right now. Um, is, is that do you want to get a master's degree in computer security? Well, if you want to move to a CISO role, chief, uh, chief security, uh, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer. Uh, if you want to move to a CISO role, then certainly not only would a master's degree in, say, uh, cybersecurity be of a, a great credential for you, but also, you know, are there any uh, specific professional credentials which would also be of value to you? I didn't specifically mention those here, but I'd like to mention others. If you want to be a project manager, then your PMP, your um, project management professional through PMI, great certification. Uh, through the certifications that we offer, if you want to move towards CIO, is, is that, uh, in, say, you're earlier in your IT management career, the IT management leadership professional and executive, which actually I'll be talking about just in the last slide of today's talk. If you're a business analyst, are these of interest to you? You know, whatever direction you're going in, do you want to move toward getting the certification in it? The truth is, is with certifications, what it does when people look at them, some people will love that you have the certifications. Other people, like how I looked at them, I, as I said, you know what, this person is serious enough about their career that they're willing to spend their own, say, time, money, and effort, in many cases, to move toward getting credential within their chosen technical area. Next is, maybe you want to be quoted by the, by the media. This is actually easier than, uh, than you may think. Uh, you can sign up for what's called Harrow, Help a Reporter Out. Uh, if you can find, if you Google it, you'll find it. And there, uh, you can go on there as a subject matter expert on anything. There's about, I don't know, two or 300,000 people who provide content, two or 300,000 people who are looking for content. And if you answer their questions, you might find yourself in, you know, um, Computer World, CIO.com, um, Time Magazine, you know, depending on what it is or where it's chosen. Uh, or maybe uh, you'll be a published author. You might say, oh my God, write a book. Well, write an ebook, you know, these or a smaller book on a, somewhere where you are uh, a true expert. What it does is it enhances your overall credentials and, it, and you'll actually also learn a lot within the process. So as we move past credentials, now let's move to a different types of skills. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and here, let's start with soft skills. You know, what set of skills and part of the list that works for you, this isn't the exhaustive list or the sort of special list that everybody needs to go. It's a list. It has some important things on it. But for you, there are some you may want to add, you may want to take off, uh, depending on the particular direction you're going. Also, particularly also on the assessment that you took earlier. You know, as you're talking to people, if someone says to you, you know, you have great ideas, but you don't listen to anybody. You know, maybe you should take a class in active listening. Maybe it's, you know what, you have great ideas, but I've seen you do a couple of presentations. You could probably use a little work there. Then maybe you, uh, you learn how to speak better by joining something like Toastmasters uh, or take a class in presentation skills. May even be offered free through your, uh, through your company. But, you know, as a general list here, you know, think of, you know, soft skills. It's funny, particular people who are technologists by background like myself. I just, uh, I basically just said, ah, soft skills, 
Who needs those things? Active listening? I've been listening to people my whole life. But what I learned later in my career is particularly as I moved into the management roles, is that the soft skills in many cases were much more important to me, much more the criteria for me to move to more senior level positions. <clears throat> they include, you know, here, certainly like vendor management. Uh, that one is geared a little bit more toward IT, but general management and uh, negotiation, problem solving, you know, strategic thinking and strategic planning, if you are going to be moving into roles where those would be important. Uh, maybe time management. You know, if you had a lot of trouble finding the time to get to today's webinar, then it either means you have spring fever because it's a beautiful day out, at least here in New England, uh, or you're just overworked and can't seem to find the time uh, to be able to organize your time effectively. And also, I'll, I'll say conflict resolution or leading without authority, which is basically the ability to influence others in the workplace. My definition of influence in the workplace is the ability to move a person's thinking, actions, or decisions in a way that forwards your business objectives. So if those are soft skills, now let's talk about hard skills. Uh, hard skills that could be a technical skill, like uh, learning how to program in uh, Python or something along that idea. But first thing that I'd like you to do is I would suggest that you say, all right, what are your marketable skills? Do sort of that professional marketable skills inventory on yourself. And once that's done, sit back and think, gee, you know what? What skills should I really have? You know, I know how to do this, but oh, I don't know how to do that. Would those that's that would be a vantage to you and say, you know what, these are really things that, uh, that would be good for me to learn to enhance my career, to position me for promotion, et cetera. And then come up with a plan to do it. We'll be talking a little bit more about that in the next section uh, in, you know, on, um, on, formula, on building your strategy. But the thing is, let me just ask you that right now. This is a great homework assignment for you after this webinar ends of what technologies do you think you should learn to enhance your career? And specifically, how can you go about learning them? Next is, let's sort of look beyond yourself. And now let's talk about the industry in general. Is what are the industry trends? You know, like for example, if in you're in, uh, working in human resource systems, then the trends are certainly toward, uh, you know, from everything you're seeing in the press, toward uh, Workday. So is that a technology you want to learn? Moving from on-prem systems to cloud-based systems. So do you want to learn how to uh, program or be an administrator on AWS or Azure or, you know, the other companies offering these type products? There we go. Now, this is next is a concept of uh, where this concept came up was I used to write for IT World. I wrote for them for about four years. And one of the columns I wrote was called from a marketability perspective, your um, your technical skills have a two year half life. What this means is that if you took exactly the skill set that you have today, your understanding of business, the technologies you work on, the versions of those technologies, the programming languages, you know, the agile best practices, ITIL, whatever it might be. And if you took exactly what you know today and went and lived in a cave for two years, when you came out of that cave with exactly the same skill set you have today, right now, you would only be half as marketable two years from now. Why? Because technologies are updated, new technologies come out, existing technologies are now what may be viewed more as legacy based, certainly changes in the business place also. So what, what will this mean to you as we move forward, as we move forward here, is make sure you keep current, you keep learning, it's a nature of being in the technology business. But also, what are your interests? If you don't want to program, then don't learn Python, you know, or learn just enough of it to know what it is if it relates to other things you want to work on. But again, know your technical strengths and weaknesses and your weaknesses from a marketability perspective. Like if you say to yourself, gee, I really want to be, a, I love being a project manager. You might say to yourself, gee, a weakness in my credentials as a project manager is I've never sat to get my PMP certification, just as an example. Um, and then next is what you have to make sure is whichever of these things on the top that you're looking at, they really have to be tied in, you know, tied closely to the career direction that you would like to take. Next is, 
is think for a moment, close your eyes for just a second. And if I were to say to you, what do you want your next promotion to be? Okay, open your eyes. Whatever you answered there, if you said, have my boss's job, if you said, gee, I want to move from being a, uh, a manager to a director in IT, or whatever it is that you've said, is, is that you want to learn about it. It might be you want an inline promotion. What an inline promotion is, is you're, say, for example, a business analyst. You want to be promoted to senior business analyst. You're a database administrator. You'd like to be moved to a senior database administrator, whatever it might be. Or organizationally, as previously said, you're an individual contributor. You want to move to a supervisor or a manager's role. But think about whatever it is that you want to do next. And then is find the job description for it. Now, you know, you might, you know, you can't really go to your boss and say, hey, boss, I want your job. Can I get a copy of your job description? But certainly if you can generic, you know, think more generically about what your boss does or whatever role you'd like to move into or what your career you would like to step into, go to Indeed or, you know, just go on the web and uh, say job description for blah, 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 whatever it might be. Read that job description. Look at about a dozen of those job descriptions. Look for the commonalities in them and use that to, to uh, um, for you to help to be able to formulate your pl plan to figure out what you really need to learn so you can properly prepare for your next promotion. So the idea being here is, you know, they say, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, when, an, uh, when opportunity comes, when that opportunity door opens, well, it's nice that it opens, but you have to be prepared for it by having the skills, the mentality, the understanding for it, whatever other preparation is needed to be able to walk through that door. Next is, let's talk about writing down your plan or formulating your plan. Yes, write it down. Now you might say, well, why do I really want to write it down? What's the importance of that? There's just something about pencil in hand or fingers on keyboard that makes it makes you really think about it more specifically. And then you write it down and you come back to it and you say, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this one in instead. It just formalizes it. And by the way, anyone who is really to-do list oriented, the mere fact that you wrote it down um, and like uh, you look at it and you go, oh, if I wrote it down, if I put it on my to-do list, done, now I have to do it. So that there's sort of those mental games you can play with yourself anyway. But anyway, what I say to you is write it down. And what you should be writing in it is what are your short-term goals, your next promotion, the, uh, the certification that you'd like to get, but something that you can start, you know, fairly immediately, so to speak, but also consider your long-term goals. You may say my long-term goal is to become a CIO, but your shorter-term goal is to be promoted from technical supervisor to IT manager. So do you, and make sure, by the way, that all of that's aligned. If your long-term goal is to go here, make sure your short-term goal isn't to go there. Or if it is to go there, at least know mentally that you've made the decision to, you know, do something a little different first before really trying to pursue your goal. And put on it, just like you would any project plan, put on the tasks that you need to get there. Figure, write down the milestones. I want to be eligible for a manager position here because, you know, at this time before my boss retires or whatever it is. But write down specific time frames for it. Now, the interesting thing about this is we often do this for other people all the time. If, you're, if you've ever managed a project, uh, if you've ever had uh, of any type, what do you do? Well, you write down your project plan. You define what the short-term and long-term deliverables are. You define the tasks that are needed to get to those deliverables and the milestones you have to reach, which would be the deadlines when you have to provide that, you know, provide those uh, deadlines or complete the task or provide those deliverables to the people that you work with. It's typical project management of one sort or another, whether it's formalized or on the back of an envelope. You have these skills. All that I'm suggesting that you do here is use those skills for your own benefit to enhance your own career and not just as part of the projects and such you're working with internally. You know, sometimes in a lot of cases is the skill set that you work with when you're in the office, when you step out of the office and now you're in home or you're thinking about your own careers, those work skills become life skills. Sorry, we've talked a lot about formulating your strategy. Now let's move forward for a moment. Uh, and talk about building your brand. 
So let's start by building your skills. So where are you going to get these skills? You know, uh, if you could give the office, the obvious answer is, well, I'll take a class. But there's much more that you can do beyond that. Let's say that you want to learn how to, I don't know, design new databases. You want to move toward the um, human resource systems. You want to move toward cloud-based application development, whatever it is, you know, whatever that thing is that you want to do. Well, as you can, as, as the opportunity comes up within your department or within your company, you know, strategically volunteer for pro to work on projects, even if you're sort of busy. Someone says, hey, uh, anybody want to check out AWS for us? And you go, and you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, I'm really busy, but boy, do I want to move toward cloud development. Put your hand up, find the time. You know, is what it will do is it will help position you internally, not only as someone that's willing to volunteer, but now someone who has been moving, you're, you're moving toward the area that you'd like to go. Um, but next, also volunteer your time at a nonprofit. Now, the, the big reason to do that is you're doing good for the world. But imagine that I was your boss and came to you and said this. Looking at the list of those that have signed on. Uh, Deb, I'll pick on you. <clears throat> Um, hello, Deb. Is uh, you do a great job working for us in our department. You're a great IT manager, and you know you find meaning in work in the work that you do for us. You have friends that you work with. Some of your best friends are here at the office, and you feel that the work we're doing in our department and what our company does overall is good for the world. Given all that, what I'd like you to do starting tomorrow with the same vigor and motivation and interest is I'd like you to work for free, all right? What do you think, Deb? Any interest in that or any interest from anybody? I'm going with probably no. But the thing is, if you're leading a volunteer type project and volunteer work at a nonprofit, uh, it could be an awesome organization like the Special Olympics, or it could be related to your religious institution, wherever you happen to, to belong, or anything else along that line. You know what? When you're trying, when you're leading a project, say at a, uh, you know, your favorite nonprofit, yes, do it because it's uh, it does good for the world. But don't underestimate what you learn as a leader because you're having to motivate people, you're going having to organize them, sometimes you're having to have difficult conversations or conflict resolution, all those same things you would do in the office. But you're doing it for people who aren't being paid for it. So as a result, if you can make people do that in that situation, when it's their job and they're being compensated, the skills are virtually 100% transferable. It's incredible. The next is um, play with new technologies at home. There's a lot of open source stuff going on, you know, is that uh, whatever it might be, you know, is try to find ways to use it yourself internally. Let's say, for example, that you are a, a Linux person and you always wanted to learn how to use big data and Hadoop, but you don't, you know, you, but you can't do it at the office. Uh, Hadoop is a big data, uh, it's an open source, big data environment. Well, you know what, for $30, maybe 40 bucks a piece, you can buy three or four what they call Raspberry Pis, which are little Linux boxes that you can buy. They're literally about this big. Chain them together, put an old keyboard on it, a screen, get a bunch of old thumb drives, plug them in, um, you know, download Hadoop, put it, put, uh, you know, uh, download Hadoop from the um, Apache Foundation, um, you know, put it on the three or four machines and poof, sitting there at home, instead of watching reruns of Friends, um, you can actually learn how to do this environment to enhance your career. Effectively, what I'm suggesting here is make your profession your hobby. You know, you can have other hobbies too, but just sort of be professionally interested, have professional curiosity on the things related to your business and your area. Teach others. If anybody's taught anything, oh, I just got something from Deb. Um, I have done, uh, let me see, I have done that exact thing for a multitude of organizations and the benefits have been phenomenal. Thank you, Deb. If you remember, I used her in that last example. First of all, thank you for doing things that help the world. There's, there's, it's a wonderful thing. But also I'll say to you is that I'm glad that you then be, were able to see the benefits of that in your own professional growth. Thank you for putting that in the chat box. Greatly appreciate it. Um, but, but that's where teaching comes from also. If you've ever taught anything, uh, then what you find is that when you teach it, whether it's little kids, how to you know, swing a baseball bat, um, or it's how to uh, you know, implement a new technology or whatever it might be, 
is when you teach it, you actually learn it better yourself. In addition to the fact of obviously helping others, which is the primary reason you would do it was to help others, but don't underestimate the personal advantage of it also. But also you have to be willing to go outside your comfort zone sometime as you do these things. Now by going outside your comfort zone, I never ever ever mean it ethically. There, you know, never go outside it ethically. But what I mean here, if you're saying, gee, you know what? Oh, I really need to improve my presentation skills, but I hate giving presentations. You know, when the opportunity comes up at work, give the presentation, learn more about it. You'll find from a, from a skill set perspective, many things that are outside your comfort zone at first, you do it some, you get better at it and it becomes a skill rather than something to keep away from. Next, build your credentials. You know, get a formalized certifications if that makes sense for you. You know, begin to get a master's degree, MBA degree, whatever, undergrad degree, whatever it might be. Then you might say, oh, my God, you know, getting a master's in computer security, it'll take me four years to get that at one night a week. How could that possibly help me? What's really, really interesting is once you sign, you know, when it says, you know, batch, um, you know, advanced degree in computer security. If they like you, the mere fact you're in the program. Now, if you're going to sign up for the program, don't just do it for the window dressing. Certainly be in it with the personal intent of finishing it. But the mere fact that you have that master's degree in cybersecurity on your, you know, um, uh, to be completed in June of 2025 kind of thing, you know, be honest about it. But the mere fact that you're in the program and you have it on the resume, all other things being equal, that's good enough. You know, unless you're working for the kind of consulting firm that uses your degrees as part of their marketing effort. Um, next is, is document the work you do at work. Is, is that you're working on great projects? Is, is that, you know, have, a, you know, not necessarily even having to build your resume, but just put down all the good things you've worked on. Because you know what? If I said to you, okay, what are all the great projects you worked, worked on in 2014? You're going to go, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I, yeah, I did that. That would be good. Write them all down. Build a catalog of your accomplishments, of the things that you've done. Why? Because then you can use that to your advantage, basically, as a, uh, um, as a, a reference of yourself as you're applying for new jobs, as you're applying internally to work on a project, you can say, oh yes, I worked on this, this, and this previous to coming to this company. And remember two years ago, I worked on this project, which is really applicable for me, for you to now assign me to this project I wanna work on now. Next is write an ebook. I'm like, oh God, writing a book again? Go outside your comfort zone a little bit. If you have a key specialty, ebook could be 15 pages, you know, uh, uh, 3000 words. It's not a lot to put together, but what it does is you have to think about the topic more if you're going to write about it, but also it begins to show you as a subject matter expert and a thought leader in that area that you're trying to go. Next is, is maybe, you know, uh, teach college part-time. Very, very early in my career, um, I actually did it, to be honest. I taught my first class at college because I was a very, very young professional. I knew the topic and I needed the money. Not that it pays a lot, but a little extra money based on what I was making at the time was a good thing. So then just by chance, uh, you know, I applied for a new job, a full-time job. And they said to me, oh, uh, was on, uh, my class was actually on uh, um, database design, one of my fourth classes that I taught. And they said to me, they said, well, you know, what do you know about database design? Do you have any, you know, uh, what's your experience at it? And I said, well, I actually teach it at the undergraduate level. You know, the next question they asked me, when can you start? And I was like three weeks into a 12 month, uh, into a 12 week semester. But the mere fact I was selected for it, I'm teaching at a college, I must have a clue, at least a clue what it is. So you know, and I learned a lot in teaching it, uh, and so on. So anyway, use that to your advantage, think about these things, going sort of sort of uh, outside the box, so to speak, on ways to get skills and build your credentials. <clears throat> Next is building your knowledge, in addition to teaching, which we've just mentioned. Um, but find some blogs that you like, discussion boards, websites. If, for example, if you're looking to go toward IT management, uh, say you're an IT manager and you'd like to be a CIO one day, read what the CIOs read. You know, go to CIO.com, ZDNet, Computer World, you know, those type things, you know, that are talking about, you know, you want to go to a website that not only has blogs and such that work that are uh, associated with your level now, which helps you build and enhance your current job description. 
But what you also should be doing is you should be going to websites that speaks of things like your boss speak would be at. So, you know, talking about computer security in general, as opposed to uh, update a specific vendor's firewall. Why? It, get, it begins to give you that, um, that, that mindset of your boss. In fact, there's a, le- a name for it. It's called level up management. But also take advantage of free classes that are offered through your company. You know, you, many of them are e-learning based. You know, as far as YouTube goes, it's really hard to find good YouTubes. But you know what? If you can't find out how to do something on YouTube, then there's no way to do it. You know, uh, cross train, go to vendor presentations that are offered. You know, all of these ways are, 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 can be used to enhance your professional craft. All right, lastly here, as we've now reached topic five of five, which is perfect because we're beginning to run out of time. But anyway, market yourself. As I said at the very beginning of this, you don't want to be your best kept secret. Is that begin to gain an industry presence. You know, in other words, get get other people outside of your company to to get to know you. Now, a lot of people said, oh, I went to a chapter meeting of, you know, chapter association X once and eh, speaker was all right. You know, talked to a couple of people. Eh, It wasn't really worth my 25 bucks. All right. Let me give you the sort of the secret of professional associations, whether it's for SIM, which is for senior IT managers, whether it's a special interest group. Actually, we'll be talking about that next. Uh, as well as just professional association meetings. The key to these associations isn't going once, you know, maybe you'll pick up a little information on a topic that uh, because you like the speaker. <clears throat> the power of these professional associations is going again and again and again for six months, 12 months, two years, and not just showing up and leaving, joining the board, getting involved in a committee, becoming part of the fabric of that association. That's the power of this. Of, of associations in general. Why? Because, you know, you'll then go, uh, you'll say, gee, you know, I'd love a job doing X. And then all of a sudden, you know, someone says, uh, raises their hand at the beginning of the meeting and says, hey, uh, my company has a job looking for someone who, um, who does X. Anybody know anyone who's interested? You go up to them afterwards. They know you because they've seen you meeting after meeting. It's basically a warm lead. Or you go in and there's a particular technology and you're tr- that you're working on and you look, there's 10 vendors out there and you don't know which one to choose. So you go and you say, hey, anybody, uh, uh, are you familiar with any products on, um, you know, uh, analytical tools? What are you guys using? And you'll get honest feedback and input because, again, you're part of the group. And also you'll be giving that kind of feedback to others. Um, next is online. Um, do you have your name as your URL? Now, for me, actually, it was hard when I realized I should do this. Uh, you know, Eric Bloom is um, the, the, if anyone's familiar with the old rock band, Blue Oyster Cult, um, the lead singer's name is Eric Bloom. Uh, when I started writing, I was a nationally syndicated columnist for two years before I got my name above the fold because, well, he's a fancy guy. So anyway, if you look for me on LinkedIn and you see someone who really looks like a cool musician, I'm the other guy. Uh, but anyway, if, even if you don't have your own website now, or you don't really know if you want to, if, go in and see if your name is open as a URL and for 12 bucks a year, get it. But also start writing a blog. It'll enhance your knowledge of the topic. And when people want to see how knowledgeable you are, say for, for whatever, is, is that they're going to go to your website and look at your blog. Join an open source initiative. You know, for example, is if, you, uh, if you're really interested in big, you know, big, I'll just go back to big data again. Um, Join the consortium that's writing open source software, you know, and maybe you'll get lucky on one that really, you know, is is really big. Like, for example, that's how um, WordPress was built. You know, that's the premier website, the uh, website tool that, uh, you know, has a huge percentage of people. That's open source. You know, you want to be, if you want to move toward being a website developer, people can say, well, what's your knowledge of WordPress? And you can say, well, actually, I'm a member of the, uh, of the, Word, of the WordPress open source consortium that's working to enhance its functionality. Oh, great. Can you build my website for me? So see how this stuff ties together. Whoops. Next one is uh, participate in discussion boards related to uh, questions that you can uh, begin to show your value and knowledge. Um, write what well, we already mentioned, writing an ebook or write white papers and deliver them, put them on your new website. Uh, build your LinkedIn connections. Uh, use that to your professional advantage. It's basically the future Rolodex of people always update it themselves. So let's say, for example, that uh, Alex, let's say that you and I work together 
And then, you know, you go to this company, I go to that company, we sort of, uh, we got along, we liked each other, but we sort of lost connection with each other. If I ever want to get connected to you again, or you to me, if we're on LinkedIn, it take a second, because why? We each update our own, so it's an updated contact list. <clears throat> Write a YouTube video, do a YouTube video. Many, many people have actually gotten business more than, than, you know, I care to admit to you, I know many, many people who actually will do things on YouTube and actually they've been found that way. In fact, YouTube now, because it's owned by Google, it comes up very high in, in, uh, in search results. Now let's talk about sharing your knowledge. You, know, you can share your knowledge through um, your own department. First, be the best employee you can be. Be willing to share your knowledge with others. And we'll be coming back to that one also, because you want to be the go-to person within your department. When anyone wants to know what's going on in your department or how to do this particular technology or perform that particular task, if they go to you, what does that do? That shows you're knowledgeable. You're, you know, back to being, you know, a team player. You know, you play well in sandbox, as you saw in an earlier slide. Uh, it demonstrates, again, that you're a team player, but also mentor junior people. Now, not only should we as employees to help, you know, our fellow colleagues, but also let's say you're an individual contributor right now <clears throat> that would like to move to a management role. Well, guess what? If you're seen as someone who is effectively mentoring those underneath you, you are showing your senior management that you have the ability to provide advice and direction to those who are more junior to you professionally. Isn't that a good shoe in for a management position? Next, for your company. <clears throat> How can you spread your, um, you know, your or market yourself to, to a wider part of the company or part of a big IT shop, if you're in one even? You know, assist in the creation of company-wide standards or best practices. If they're looking for a committee to implement ITIL from places around the company, volunteer. Why not? Um, next is, is the volunteer for cross-department initiatives. Like it could be the holiday party, you know, but by doing that, you're going to meet other people in other parts of the company, which expands your professional network. Or if there's a, a specific technology where you're the true expert, that what you want to do then is you want to be the, um, if you do that, uh, talk about that at different just sort of staff meetings or lunch meetings, then you're really positioning yourself as the person in the company on that particular topic. Uh, participate in internal social media if your company has it. Next, as we're beginning to wind down, is also within your industry, is, you know, uh, well, all, as you did in your company, in your industry, assess in developing, uh, you know, industry standards. You know, um, find, you know, find an industry that you're involved with. Like I know someone that did this within the EDI industry, electronic data interchange. It's really a very, very popular technology behind the scenes that most people don't know about. He got involved in the national implement in, in the national standards board for it. It helped him get a job. Uh, I know someone actually, it's a, it's a business person I'm working with now um, who got really involved in creating one of the ISO, it was actually ISO 44001, helped create that standard and now is an incredible company uh, that's associated with it. Next is speak, you know, share your knowledge, speak at industry conferences, you know, local, uh, local groups at a professional chapter meeting. Um, join the board of directors, directors of a local association for whatever one of those above industry groups that you're involved with. It's incredible uh, how much contact, you know, do it for the right reason to give back to your profession, but it really does help you also in the process. You know, get quoted as earlier mentioned, get published. All of these things, what they do is they help you share your knowledge. And uh, when building your professional brand, your knowledge is most powerful when you share it with others. So then from there, what I'd like to say is I just like to say, I hope that you've been enjoying this, that you got some value from it. Um, I do these webinars on a monthly basis. Our next one is on July 9th uh, coming up and the topic will be time management techniques for IT managers and professionals. If you've liked this one, sign up, tell your friends about it also, if you wish. Um, whoops, there we go. Next is, is that um, where this webinar will eventually be about a week or two out, uh, if you want to see it again or whatnot, um, join what we have access to our IT leadership growth library. There's a free version of that that you can join that's somewhat limited or a more advanced version of it, you know, should you wish to get the full catalog of uh, 
um, of uh, materials and such that's contained within it. It has eBooks, it has blogs, it has all sorts of stuff that you know you may find of value. Um, next is is that uh, if your company itself is looking for uh, a 12 month leadership program, sort of turnkey, let us know. Uh, we have many topics we, where we can implement that specifically for your firm around IT leadership man, uh, leadership development. And for you personally or for your colleagues, is, is that uh, we're proud to say that both our um, IT, they have two certifications, both start with IT, our IT management professional and management executive, and I'll go back to here, was actually selected by CIO.com uh, November of last year as one of the top 10 IT management training programs. Uh, please check it out on, uh, on our website. You might find it a value. It's a three-day intensive um, on basically these three courses. It's virtual, we offer it monthly. Uh, you'll see here, you know, thinking like an IT manager or as a technical professional, rather, and the other options that are here. If you're more advanced, if say you're a manager of managers at this point, is you may find the ITMLE of interest to you, which is really preparing you then for more senior IT roles. So from here, what I'd like to do is, again, open it up to questions. I'd like to say thank you so much for spending, uh, I guess that's 52 minutes of your life with me. I hope you found it of value. Um, any questions before we call it a day?